Welcome back to Hot Takes and Deep Dives. This is Jess, and I am here with the one and only. He's the host of So Bad It's Good with Ryan Bailey. He is my podcast husband. It's Ryan Bailey. <laughs> How are you? What's up, what's up, hot takers? What's up, deep divers? Uh, I'm good. I'm. I'm actually. I'm not good. I threw. I have a sciatica issue, so oh, I'm no. like. I'm doing the. Well, I mean, it's silly. It's like the, I'm at that age where things like start falling apart, I guess. So I'm I'm in bed with a heat. I, I never thought I would use a heating pad in my life. And I have a heating pad on. I feel like uh, PC would make fun of me so bad for laying down with a heating pad. Oh, my God. Well, it's so I, I know how you refer to your your listeners like, you know, you like to call them like baddie nation. I am fully <laughs> in preppy nation now for NYC I, prep. Well, Preppy Nation, and the sad thing is that like Preppy Nation deserves to exist, and Bravo did everything in their power to crush this show. You give us eight episodes of gold, and that is what's so frustrating looking back. Like, if they had just, like, I'm starting this thing like Bravo Laws, and one of the laws is if you do a show on Bravo, you get two seasons right out of the gate. There's not just two seasons. You don't, because. Bravo has to regret so many decisions looking back, whether it be Princesses Long Island, which I know you love, whether it be NYC Prep. These are part of Bravo's history. And I mean, Gallery Girls is another one. It's shameful. Yeah. And I love Bravo, but it's shameful that we are left just out in the wind wondering what happened with all the I mean, I, I would have killed to have seen the second year of that show. OK, so here's oh, wait, by the way, guys. Welcome to our. Oh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Welcome to our. I mean, this is our NYC prep revisit. Actually, this is my first visit to NYC prep. It's crazy. So I am. I have spent the last week binging this show, and so I am really coming in hot today. How many times have you watched this? All the I would way say through? like about four times, but it's also one of those things, and that's not that many. Um, but it's one of those things that you can have on in the background, like Bravo shows, I think are great. And a lot of reality shows are great in that sense that you can leave it on in the background while you go about, and especially during quarantine, where you go, where you go about your quarantine day. And if you look up, you're like, Oh, that's a cool moment. I remember that moment. And then you kind of get sucked in and then you can go back or it's like the perfect, if you watched it once straight through, it's not like the wire, you know, watch it once where it's like really in depth. And then the other times you can be on your phone. Yeah, I mean, this isn't the Sopranos. It's not the Sopranos. Like you can kind of, <laughs> you know, you're not going to, well, miss... I mean, we can derive huge meaning from everything, but it, it would be deriving meaning that these kids don't even, you know, except for PC, who thinks he is really the genius of the group and such a deep thinker I, Ryan, he is. Ryan, I have so much. Th we can do an hour on PC if you want, but we'll, I know we'll... he really, I mean, and PC, I mean, I'm shocked. I, I wonder now you just watched this show. I wonder now if you had known how many times you've bumped into PC on the street. In New I York. would, he is my, my right now he has shot up like a rocket he is my number one dream guest to get on this podcast i know it will never happen because oh. he's super private now i i mean it's pretty much like joy I, Be I, joy behar and pc what can i say i think it is i think it is possible i have never tried because i would be i i'm i know he would judge me like, I don't need that kind of judgment in my life. You know, like, I mean, I think you could handle it beautifully. I know I would like crash and burn with that because, you know, he's still I mean, you read even I guess we're not going to jump ahead to what he's doing now. But mm -hmm. it is it's just crazy because even then he was such a he wanted to be such a tortured soul. It was, you know, we always had the, those friends in high school that we I, I remember looking up like, oh, my God, this guy reads Salinger and he's listening to like deep cuts from R.E.M. And oh, my God, like he's, you know, we, all those guys. And he was that perfect representation, obviously, somebody that was struggling with their sexuality. Yeah. Um, so many things. And like, you know, even his therapist, he goes he goes into his therapist. And Amazing. His, you know, he connects with his therapist because his therapist is like, you've got a lot going on in there. He's like, yes, thank you for noticing. You know, like <laughs> he, why, he, you know, you just see that there's such a sadness to PC. Um, and it, it's like, but all these guys, they're all cosplaying as adult assholes. Well, they're, they're so young. Like I was saying, I was like talking about this show briefly and they're so young. Well, not PC. He's an adult. He was 18. But some of them, like the girls but, but, and yes, Sebastian. Not, but see, 18 still not an adult. I mean, but it's he still, comes off like an adult. Like he still, walks 
but he's he cosplaying was- as an adult. He's he's going by what he's seen at parties his whole life, and that's who that's the that's mm-hmm. like he's like the Terminator of like he's built in all of these things that he's seen, and like I'm sure he saw like Lessons Zero and American Psycho and all that you know. It's like yeah. all that pop culture that has created who that guy is at that time. I believe. So did you watch this as it aired? Live? I did, yeah. Oh my I did. god! And I did, and I remember having such a strong reaction to PC. What was the chatter at that time? Since you watched it live, I'm sure like you kept up with like the blogs. I know like Gawker was doing recaps of it. Like it was, it was definitely being covered among the blogs. Like, did you like read any of those, or just among other people you knew? Like, to what honest, was the public chatter this, about it? To be honest, this was like the kind of the boonies for me, where. I was alone on an island by myself. Uh I mean, I was watching these shows by myself. I didn't know a community existed like this. I might have read a recap or two, but that wasn't something that I was like, that I searched out anytime. Like I was like, oh, I watch these shows and that's kind of my secret shame that has now turned into a lifelong passion. But at the time I was just what I liked to watch. And I got to be honest, I didn't talk to anybody about it. I maybe one or two friends that, you know, but it was, I just remember just watching by myself uh, and maybe my ex at the time was in on a couple episodes, but I thought I I would just remember having the strongest reaction to PC and Sebastian's flowing uh, mane. Mm -hmm. You know, he looks like Fabio before steroids, uh, Sebastian. (laughs) And I I mean, this before steroids, before puberty. But it is crazy because this is a, this is a show that would have been helped 3000% with, uh, Twitter being at its full power with Instagram being at its full power. I mean, I think Twitter existed and these things, but in a very low key way yes. where people weren't like kind of discovering as much as they are now through those apps. To give you guys an idea of the landscape. So this air, it, this filmed in 2008, it aired in 2009. And at that point, the Bravo landscape was OC had had a season Roni had had a season and I think Atlanta had had one season that was it I mean of course everything that came before it but in terms of like the Bravo that we know today this is maybe one of the first like one season wonders like the holy trinity of one season wonders would be NYC prep gallery girls which I have not seen and princesses Long Island princesses did not show up until 2013 so yeah these this show the budget is low and what i love about it is how unmedia trained they were i mean the shit that the shit that flew in the day on this show they they would not get through one episode without getting either fired canceled like anything i I made a list of like everything they said that was so that that could just forget whether it's inappropriate or not it would never air today the network would protect them yeah, I mean, well, I was even watching the first I'm watching the first season of Real Housewives of Miami right now. And in the second episode, Larza Pippen drops the R word, just like oh, not even oh, in a they, not in a just in a casual, like you know, they I caught the R word at least twice, once out of Sebastian's mouth, once out of Camille's mouth. But I, but at the same time, I think that's also what's kind of beautiful about the show is that it kind of makes you think back to how far we have come as a people. And also, but that is why it is a dark comedy. This show is because these kids think they are adults. These are like 16 year olds. I mean, the, uh, you know, uh, Kelly, I mean, her parents let her live alone in New York. Let her live alone with her brother in an apartment in New York. And they live in the Hamptons. It's nuts. And, she's like I a mean, rich version of a latchkey kid. Yeah, and it's crazy, and it's like completely just, and and she's out to like these fine restaurants with her friends, like ladies who lunch or something, and it is, it's just one of those things. They're like they're acting like they this is this is the norm, and this is what they've seen their parents do, so this is what they do now, and this is what perpetuates like asshole rich person behavior for but the rest of their lives. I will say this is an accurate portrayal of prep school, the New York City prep school scene like that the, the, these kids do have a lot of money and they in the day they were being picked up in town cars like now it would just be an uber but this is real like this isn't that far off like i have a friend who his son is much younger his son is like turning eight and he is in a in a private school in the city and we had lunch the other day he's a huge nyc prep fan and he's like really you have no yeah he's like you have no idea this show is legendary in the prep school circuit 
No, it's legendary to my friend. <laughs> oh, I thought you. <laughs> I was like, wow, these kids are uh, keeping the uh, the no, flame no. alive. He was just basically saying, like, yeah, it's fucking cutthroat. Like, you have to interview. It's like interview after interview to get in, and just the amount of wealth that the parents have. Like, that's he told me a story that he knew of one kid where it rained on their birthday and their birthday was supposed to be at Chelsea Piers. There's like, there's a little amusement park inside of Chelsea Piers because it rained. The parents erected a full like carousel in their apartment. Like Um, this is the type of money. Well, I will say that was the one thing that I kind of was bummed that they didn't. And if they revamped this show with the press, I would have been really curious what, the prep school itself, what, what they were teaching the kids, like what were, you know, cause I've read wild things nowadays of like, you know, the new things that they're, they're passing on. And, you know, sometimes the intricacies of that actual life are not covered. Oh, I wait, mean, like what? Well, I mean, I'm saying, what did I read the other day of just, uh, uh, gender, you know, like of uh, being able to use pronouns, oh, of, you, yeah. you know, like I would love to know what kids like that nowadays, how that's being introduced to these school sets, you know? Yeah, that would be fascinating. I mean, obviously, that's it's not a show about that. It's about these kids. But I mean, even in the first episode, they say what all the prep schools are in a 20 square block radius in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're all Upper East Side, Upper West Side. I wonder if there was I, I did talk to one of my uh, or uh, one of my friends that I made through Instagram who listened because uh, I had done these recaps on the Patreon and said they that she had dated Sebastian's best friend for a minute and Wait, I would have loved on the, sh- the kid on the show the kid on the show yeah and I would have loved oh to have God. she said there were so many stories about when it came out and it was so like I, I mean I would love to have talked to those school kids back then about their reaction to seeing this and if it was an accurate portrayal of their lives were they offended um, things like that are kind of you know that that that's to me like even another show itself like i love that i see this show and i i think just kind of like oh i want to go so much deeper with it you know there are so many unanswered questions i'll give you this so that same friend i told you about the one who has a son he has a son in in private school here he gave he gave me this he he has a friend who used to work for tv guide and she's she actually now is like a consultant for bravo but anyway When she was at TV Guide, she interviewed Andy Cohen. This is years ago. And she said to him, one of the questions she asked was, what did you think of NYC prep? And Andy Cohen said, it was the one, it's the one that got away. He's like, we couldn't get it together. The schools made it impossible. And he's like, there, it it was a great show. It's the one that got away. That's a great P. I I love to hear that, but I will say I've been burned by Andy before. I want to (laughs) believe that's how he feels, but I'm sorry. He says every season of Beverly Hills and OC is going to be better than it has been. So I really, I I just think he's a carnival barker sometimes, even though I love him dearly and I want to meet him someday. I mean, it just has all the elements, even their placing of Taylor as the only girl that doesn't go to a prep school. And having her like it's kind of it's kind of we get that, it, you know, it's a classic trope in any kind of outsider thing of, looking in. outsider looking in of all these people that are rich. And she goes to a public school and it's that do I go with the prep school life or the public school life? There's a, a, a love triangle. You have PC trying to groom her. There's a cruel intentions vibe happening. Yeah. I mean, it's got yeah. all of the elements of something. And that's why this thing does hold up, you know, and you got Jesse who you can see her in security at, like a mile away who looks looks like a proud lion all the time. And she's just like, PC's just, I, you know, she has such a, my family has had to save his ass so many so times. Many like, times. Like, I'm, I like go deeper on that. Tell me like, what did you save him from? Like, what was he doing? Was he like fucking somebody in public? Like, what happened? Did you but she's get him out so of jail? so in love with him. She's so in love with him so much so that it angers her. She doesn't even know why she feels this way. And it just, it, it throws us back to our high school experiences when we had those things. You know, we, we, I felt that way about somebody. And like, as much as I think Jesse is just like insipid dork, uh, you know, you <laughs> kind of see where she comes from, you know? It was, it's such 
a, a time capsule for that year, for that period. I mean, just alone, the phones, the Blackberries, the constant referencing of BBM, which I was a Blackberry user in the day, and it is underrated. Oh, how, my God. How difficult it was to transition from a Blackberry to an iPhone. I used to love, I mean, the Black, I could type so fast on the Blackberry, but Cole, Cole, when he breaks up with Taylor, or when he says he doesn't want to see her anymore, he's like, don't message me, don't BBM me, don't IM me. He's going through all of these these things that don't really even exist anymore. Like don't messenger pigeon me. Don't do it. And scene where Camille had like a fashion consultant come in and go through the yes, closet. Yes. That was, and she disagreed with her. Oh she my, disagreed she's, with she's her. She's like, you're not throwing away like this Chanel blazer that it's like a family like piece from my mother and like my, my dad's something from the 90, like this, that woman who came in was really off a rocker. That well, was I mean, crazy. I mean, everybody's off their rocker in these shows, but I mean, like, I mean, whether it be, uh, you know, Kelly's singing coach to, oh, I, I mean, there's so her, many yeah. like PC's therapists. There's so many periphery characters that it, it's, or, or uh, Sebastian's dad. Oh, uh, I loved the pain. I loved seeing the adults in the show. I loved watching the parents, seeing Kelly's parents out in the Hamptons, the episode where the dog dies, the family dog dies, and we're oh, at a dog funeral. Right. It was a very special episode of NYC Prep. Like there was a shot of them, you guys, from like a hundred yards away. The camera crew got them all standing around this funeral plot for the dog, and it was—I mean, it was really heavily emotional. I mean, as but it, it's it's it is pet pet deaths are emotional, but it's very fascinating to see this in the Hamptons with this family. Bravo filmed and aired. Just a little clip of the dad, Kelly's father, paying the grave diggers or whoever. Grave they, the, digger, the people yeah. who, I mean, of course, everything they show now is meant to embarrass the housewives and yada, yada. But there was a level of it here that felt even more voyeuristic. Like, yeah, no, it, it's so funny that they chose that a producer like saw, maybe it was Andy. Like he's the one watching these tapes being like, leave the thing of them him paying. But it's. Uh, Let, why don't we let's go through the cast sort of yeah. like we'll give like a top line and maybe we'll talk, we'll talk about like where they are now who they were on the show and just any particular insights I mean should we start with PC and Jesse I feel like that's really rich yeah I mean that's you that's where the family and they, and they treat themselves like the mom and dad of this show you they know talk they about reminded, themselves you, you know? know who they reminded me of Okay, well, I'm going to make a blanket statement now. I want to see how, if you agree with this. In general, in watching the show, it was so evocative. The feeling that I get watching Vanderpump Rules in its prime, in the day, the darkness, the desperation, this show was a little evocative of that. Like, do you agree with that? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Like, even down to the like the logo, like the NYC prep logo yeah it's black that. purple and pink same as the vanderpump rules you know the all of that art like it was i wonder if when they went in to do vanderpump rules they looked back at this and they were trying to evoke there's just a darkness in both shows that is really nowhere else on bravo so my mind was there immediately and in particular pc and jesse really evoked Jax and stassi for me yeah. Oh, really? Jackson yeah. Stassi. Wow. Yeah. I was going to go with uh, Catherine O'Hara and that guy she brought in as a designer in Beetlejuice. <laughs> uh, it's like a slimmer version of that designer. I mean, that's I know. I mean, it. it, it wow. I didn't. That's like a the, really like the codependent, the codependence. But how there's but see, but there's they no with each other. There's, see, but the, I to me, there's no zero sexual chemistry. Zero. Like there is no, no, no not about the sex, not There's about no, the, the friendship. And with Stassi and Jax, I do believe that there, you know, you could see that there had been a physical relationship with those two, you know. But yeah, I mean, I can see the friendship. The friendship is, the friendship is interesting on so many levels because it's like PC really yearning to go out and explore everything in his life and push, you know, quote unquote boundaries. And Jesse watching this and and being horrified, jealous, all of those emotions, and seeing somebody potentially doing dangerous things to themselves. And it's kind of that deeper meaning of like, how do you say goodbye to a friend? You know, you do outgrow friends, and uh, you know. Uh, I would wonder how close PC and Jesse are now. I don't Same. believe they are close. You know? I really would love to know, like, did they split 
you know, as friends, like right when they went to college, like did this show. Like I re- I'm dying to know. Yeah, PC definitely had like a Jax-ish vibe to me. And and she just reminded me of Stassi because really smart, quick, funny. Like she just, I don't know. It's immediate. It was one of my immediate notes that I had in my head when watching yeah, it. Yeah, no, I mean, I, 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 love the, I love the comparison. I just think it's like, to me, it's a much, well, it's a much colder relationship and it's a much younger relationship than Jackson Stasi. And that's saying a lot because Jackson Stasi are immature AF on the first that first season, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, what can we say? I mean, PC and Jesse had this I don't think he was out to her at all. No, not at all. Uh, I mean, I I mean I, I don't think he's out to anybody really, is he? I mean he said he's he said he's like, Oh, I've dabble and then he was on vacation in Cabo, which was hysterical. Oh, the Cancun the, his, the, the Cancun, Cancun, yeah. That was thing so he goes to he goes to Cancun over Christmas. And he's like, I need this so bad. I need this so he's, bad right he's now. He's meeting up with his boarding school friend. They've been friends since they're thirteen. It's so clear that like they were hooking up when they were 13. That's why this kid is like, he's bisexual. He flat out says he's bisexual. Like when they're on the beach, like it didn't seem like but a he, joke. I, it's not, a, but I do feel like they were poking fun at him at times. His friends of like, Oh, like, I, you know, I don't know, but it did seem, I mean, I, I don't doubt. And I do agree with you that they obviously were doing something at boarding school together. And that's what even led to that. But there is a I don't know if it was because the cameras are there of saying, oh, I'm fully doing this and that. But you can even see like his the test for uh, a, the majority of women, like, you know, when he's at the club, and girls are coming up and talking to him. And he's like, oh, you're from Texas. That's cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're just drinking here. Like and he's like, I'm just going to get so wasted right now. Yeah. And. You know, and also everything that PC does is uh, PC does is performative. So if he gets drunk, he wants to get wasted. If he's going to take photo shoots, he's going to be naked. Like it's always the extreme of everything. You know, it's it's the I'm going to be the best at everything, but just with stupid things. Mm-hmm. I got to be honest, I really related to him. Like I, I mean, maybe this is terrible to admit, but like I definitely saw myself. In him, like when reflecting on my own, like senior year of high school, you have an angle when you're sort of like, if like, if like you know you're gay or bisexual, whatever it is, but like you're not quite out, you do walk around with this cynicism and anger at the world because you're frustrated. And so I had a lot of empathy for PC and like watching him. Like I, I saw, I didn't see him as an asshole, I saw him as somebody who was like kind of still like finding his way and and like I would be happy when he would like make those friends at the photo shoot who like clearly he started hooking up with that guy that more like feminine looking guy yeah like I liked him sort of spreading his wings and like entering a world that was bigger than his little high school circle and I could totally relate to Jesse being so threatened by that like I had both sides of that experience like I I had a friend, like my best friend in high like in high school, we were both gay and I would be so jealous of his other female friends. Like huh. I just really related to a lot of this. Well, I mean, I but I also the the humble brags of PC of like, oh, I've been oh, God, I went to bed at eight AM. Like, oh, See, my God. that's bullshit. All, Did that really I happen? Up, uh, I was up all night. Oh, my God. Like, so much vodka, Red Bull, just crazy stuff you wouldn't even want to know. Like, uh, but, you know, like, you know, it's just so funny. It's like that, like, oh, I haven't even paid attention at school. Like, it's all just so artistic and deep. And I'm running with the wrong crowd, potentially. But the wrong crowd is like Devora and her weirdo friends that are all like rich kids as well. You know? Oh, we're going to get into Devora. Mind, mind you, I had not googled this show i went in blind so like no one is more surprised than me of of how much i by how much i truly enjoyed watching this i didn't know who the characters were so i was just taking everything at face value i had no idea that there was this sexuality component with pc my early notes on the show are hilarious before i realized that he is gay slash bisexual all my notes are like i'm in love with pc I'm like, I am so attracted to PC. Like, he is my man. I don't know how anybody could be into Sebastian. Sebastian is such a fucking doofus. Like, PC is like it. Well, so, and Sebastian, <laughs> like, you know, yeah, I guess we'll get to Sebastian. But Sebastian yeah. has, I just love that his big moves are his hair flip and oh he speaks God. a little French. Do you remember the scene? It was late in the series. 
and maybe it was like one of the last episodes he's in Jesse's room she's like on the computer he's on her bed and she's a few stuffed animals and he takes the stuffed animals and starts like having them like simulate fuck, yeah, fucking. yeah yeah and like, she turns yeah. to him in the most earnest way and just says are you gay and yeah. he just like looks at her it, that was fascinating by how yeah. real that I mean, moment was yeah i mean i think that jesse was realizing a lot of things about her supposed friend uh along with the bravo audience you know also the the, the thing with these reality shows are great is because we can see these things through you know 10 miles away whereas the friends right in front of their face is it's a shock to them, you know, but we, you know, that's what I'm saying. The, the camera telegraphs so much, you know, and it, that's why I, I always don't really believe in bad edits because the camera will usually not lie, you know, it, it'll mm-hmm. pick up and the audience can like, you know, that's why you don't have to say a lot of words in scenes, you know, you can let the acting do its work and be, because whatever's happening behind the eyes telegraphs. And that's, I think, triple for reality shows, you know? Mm hmm. I wonder if Bravo was in a bind because he is so young. Like, how can you, unless well, he's how like, do you, how do you portray that? Well, yeah. Like, unless he's like, okay, like I'm down to be out on television. Clearly like that wasn't a conversation that happened between the producers and PC beforehand. Yet it all kind of unfolded. I would kill uh, to speak would, to a producer of this show. I would kill to speak to uh, a gay man that watched it at the time and what they mm-hmm. thought of PC and uh, you know, was that, I mean, was that, how did they view it? Was it, uh, Oh, cool. Here's somebody that's kind of like, you know, or were they like sad that they did, they didn't go further with the storyline? Like, why didn't they, why didn't they push for him coming out? You know? Right. Yeah. So cut to present day PC two years ago, Got met, he made headlines for the first time in years. He got married in in Vegas to a childhood friend of his at the same wedding chapel that Britney did. By the way, that fifty five hour marriage, same. Oh, place really? In Vegas. <laughs> yes. yes, yeah. And and he's friends with uh, Tiffany Trump. She was the flower girl. Yeah, but you know, really good friends with Tiffany. It is funny how all these like birds of a feather feather flock together. You know, these people. They posted this message on Instagram that says, like, they put the announcement. The The girl writes, Peter and I, his name is Peter Carey Peterson. The girl writes, Peter and I are not romantically involved. We have never had sex. It's pure friendship. In fact, we're still dating others and, when, and we'll continue to seek love in all forms. Hey, we're just their, marriage other. on their terms. I mean, this is nuts. We are just each other's hearts and wish to begin our journey towards evolution. Because the more we face reality, the more we can sit like yada, yada, yada. It goes on. And he writes... Esme, that's the friend. Esme and I got married in Las Vegas this weekend. For over 10 years, we've been dis- been discussing this. And then, meanwhile, just this past September, she filed for divorce because I looked at her Instagram. She's in a serious relationship. She has a... a I'm sure a, I'm sure that goes over well with uh, whoever with, she's with. <laughs> well, well, that's why she filed for divorce. That's why I'll tell you. That's what she rich, has a real boyfriend in, so they have Rich to. people get to experiment with things like marriage and stuff like that. But us, the working class, we have to do things the right way. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Like, to make a wild, public announcement, not, we've never had sex. It's wild, but it's not surprising. You know, it's wild, but it's not surprising. If you are somebody like PC or that set, you are doing things like that. That is your normalcy. That is where you get your endorphin pushes when you release press releases like that. That is right. the real, uh, you know, wedding night sex that they did not have, you know? Like, oh, that press release. Uh. His step-grandmother created Sesame Street. No way. Yeah. His his what? grandfather is the billionaire. So the whole family has like been a part of history. Yes. That person, PC. <laughs> yeah. Can you believe it? So his Instagram is private, which I did request access to. He has yet to accept me. So that's the wrap on PC. TBD. I would give anything. Well, I would give anything for, I would give anything to even hear the turn down. Like, you know, come on and just let me know why you wouldn't do it. Like, yeah, can we like have a conversation or or just to even get the Instagram no back to see how you would write it? I would be fascinated. I knew a writer friend of mine 
years ago, I vaguely remember this, tried to get an interview with him through a mutual friend of theirs. And the mutual friend came back and said, I, they probably never even asked PC, but the mutual friend came back and said, oh, that's not something that PC would ever be interested in. Well, yeah, I'm sure. Yes. I mean, like, <laughs> unless it's like, like, you know, Spielberg's making a blockbuster movie about his time on NYC prep. <laughs> he would like, I'm sure being an onset consultant, you know, oh, but the, other the, than that, it's not yeah. like he podcasts are probably gross to him. Like it's not a, it's not a recognized art form, you know, none of these kids have ever, I mean, I haven't seen any of them interviewed. They are off the map. None of them ever did interviews. They've never been on a podcast. There's nothing on them on YouTube. It, it was very interesting to see that they're the rare breed that they did this show and left it behind. Like they yeah. didn't seek. They're not like the real worlders who, you know, a, good, a healthy majority of them or a certain majority of them went on to try and capitalize on the reality TV money, the fame, all of that. Like these kids want nothing to do with fame damn i respect that i mean god it is so good finally to meet people that want nothing to do with fame like hats off and now i want to see them even more like i want to see like the yeah. fact that we don't have any of these kids doing spawn con like the fact that i don't see kelly doing tummy tea ads like i mean they were all primed to become influencers but that but it was before, but it was before the, the time sets. i mean like yeah. that's what i'm saying you could that's why this show is either ripe to like do a where are they now or a where are they now into a new cast of NYC prep. The foundation is there. The the commodity is there. The the brand is there. Like a Matt, this show, I'm telling you, would succeed with today's like today's social media. One hundred percent. I mean, th this show in particular was primed to absolutely get a second season. You let. PC and Jesse were graduating. Okay, they're, they've now graduated. You follow the juniors and seniors, and then you bring in two new kids who are either hopefully juniors and seniors. I don't think we need to see any more sophomores. And let it go on from there. You follow the friends you have. It's a constantly evolving. The natural evolution is going to be right there. It's like Beverly Hills 90210 and all of those shows. You know, it's like you introduce new characters, you take old characters out. Like this is a... This to me is a franchise. Like treat it as such. This to me has way more life than like a princess is Long Island. This show was I, well, I like this I don't so know, much. Jess, so I mean, much. I I love princess. I could see I could see Wait, you like princesses more? No, this, not more. Not more, this but is like, better. I, this is better in the sense of it brings you but see princesses to me has the same thing of taking me into a world that I was not aware of that existed. But Princesses and, was much more scripted and sort of over the top, like hokey. This was like a lit. There were moments in this that were very fly on the wall. What year did Cruel Intentions come out? Because I wonder like on what. Oh, Cruel, Cruel Intentions, Intentions was a couple came... years before this, right? Uh, let me look it up. Cruel and oh yeah, C Cruel Intentions came out a decade before this. This came out when I was in high school. This came out in nineteen in ninety nine. You can see these kids are heavily influenced by that movie, though. I mean, I feel like that is how they treat their relationships, how they are almost into that trope of, oh, we as rich people play with the poor, you know? Right. And also, can we talk the sex? You know, we talked about the Jesse PC sexuality or the non-sexuality there. But can we talk about in the first episode where Sebastian's saying like, oh, sex is so prevalent. I can go through two to 16 girls in a month. And I came to the conclusion that after five episodes, he's not talking about sex. He can't be. He's talking about like making out, potentially feeling boobies. But like there is not like because at first about I was like going on those awkward dates. Exactly. But he but he's talking about it like oh yeah like sex is so prevalent in that and I, i'm like i think he thinks like second and third base is sex or something because i was like wait a sec this kid's like straight up effing people like it, no, it, he's, it makes he's like not even through puberty this yeah kid. i know that's what i was like i was like the thought of him like dry humping somebody was just shocking to me no. and like him just flipping his hair back and forth and that's when i got really scared i was like oh my god he's like he's trying to attack poor kelly like but then i realized i was like okay i think this is just you know but it's, it's just hysterical that it's a numbers game for sebastian he, you know he comes at it from a different tactic as he throws a wide net 
he can get, you know, two to 16 numbers in a month. If one person turns him down, this is a great party. There's a lot of lookers here. You know, it's very, uh, it's a different form of the cockiness and the self-absorption that PC has. He, you know, you know, it's it's more of a straight man obsession than yes, PC, you know, exactly, exactly. He, you know, at first I was totally turned off by him. Yeah, initially I was like, this kid is just a Justin Bieber doofus. But in the end, he kind of won me over. I mean, I don't see how these girls are really into him. Maybe a lot of that was just for the show, but. Oh, the power of that man's hair. He knew it, too. He knew if he gave him, like, a double hair flip. You guys, he has this flowing mane of hair, and now he doesn't. And it cracked me up when his dad, he had he had uh, lunch with his dad because you saw his dad was balding. I was like, ha-ha, motherfucker. That's your future right there. I caught the I bald- love they put. I, I the love. <laughs> I love they put in his dad because I was like, that's your future, bro. Enjoy the 2 to 16 girls now a month because those are going. Well, now he's, I believe, married as well. If yeah. You go to his Instagram. He seems very well adjusted. Like he's very, a, but very also young Republican a little bit. Very, I mean, I I could be guessing that. It well, just seems well very, allegedly, we, we don't know that for sure. <laughs> uh, no, I'm just saying the look of it is a very yeah. clean cut. You know, yeah, yeah. No, he looks great now. Like he, well, he eventually went to college in Charleston, and he came back to New York. He worked as a production assistant at Watch What Happens Live. No way. Yeah, he was a he was even a bartender a few years back. See, but like, why can't Bravo do special things like this? I like, know. where are they now? Like, a Watch What Happens Live hour long special, treat it even like Below Deck, where you don't give them a proper effing reunion and just like put them all in the Watch What Happens Live set. Do you know how appreciative we would be? Or if you do Bravo Can't Con 2021 or 2022, give a Princesses of Long Island reunion, NYC prep reunion. I'm guaranteeing you, Bravo, it will sell out. It will be the hot ticket. We want to give credence and respect to the history of bravo and this is a huge part of it when you watched this live you so that means you were able to see the reunion there was a reunion for this but it's not on i watched this on amazon the and the reunion is not there do you recall a reunion to be honest i don't to be honest and i you know there's no doubt i would have watched it i mean but like that's in a time when like i was watching bad girls club reunions i was watching anything i could get my hands on i was watching in my life on the d list i was watching i mean i was watching blowout i was watching everything so and also you got to remember back then reunions weren't uh as insane as they are now you know like or, or mtv you had uh, I don't know if they used to do re- reunions, but it seems like something that they would have done. Uh, but I was like into Teen Mom. I was into all that stuff. So <laughs> I just don't remember if I did watch. I know if it aired, I did watch it, but I don't remember what I saw. And that's oh, just I would, sad. I, I mean, it it's sucks. a bummer. I, want, I really want to watch it, but it-, it Do you ever think I, about I those things? It. Like, do you ever like just not remember? Like, you're like, I know I probably did, but it's like so long ago. Does that happen to you? Yeah, Totally. Do you ever see those like like I always think about those uh, movies or TV where they, you know, hypnotize somebody to like get a license plate number of somebody <laughs> that robs somebody? And I'm like, can I hire somebody to like un like to like hypnotize me to find out if I saw the NYC? So you can reunion? hit play on the NYC. Yeah, prep reunion. <laughs> like I, I but all these useful tools, I don't want to do anything really like good with them. I just want to see if I've accessed memories about Bravo in the past. But yeah, Sebastian, I mean, those dates I mean, listen. I know a lot of that was set up for the cat. It was set up for the show, but they these kids don't speak. Like Jesse and <laughs> well, well, uh, Jesse and PC are the really only two on the show that can communicate. Camille too. She had a mouth that she knew how to talk. Oh, but these well, girls she prided herself on that. But these these girls like Kelly and Taylor. I mean, these are just like you know interchangeable mousy you know, non-personalities, just like talking heads with Sebastian, who's another kind of like bobblehead that not an interesting thought came out of any of the three of them. But that's what I love, though, because no interesting thought did come out. So it was fascinating to watch these kids, like you said earlier, on media trained on like of like, hey, what's going on? It's like if me, if I was like, it's when I used to like dance around in front of my parents VHS camera, I'm like, oh, put it on me. And then I wouldn't know what to say. I'd be like, Mm -hmm. get all nervous. And you could see that nervousness and them like warming up to the cat camera, you know, uh, especially with Taylor, the non prep school girl. I'm like, everybody's fighting over this girl. She doesn't say anything she says like five or six words and it's always like uh 
didn't she say she wanted to be a vet, veterinarian or something or what was she, her, oh no it was taylor like, said she wanted to work with be an elephant trainer and also yes, wanted to be a, also wanted to be a philosopher sadly though that is not what taylor ended up doing can you talk about this you know we don't have I wish we had more proof on this, but Taylor uh, is supposedly homeless, is supposedly on the streets of New York. Is this Somebody's, true, though? I have heard it. There's been a couple of accounts of seeing it that don't seem like bullshit. And then also there was one photo that she had posted or somebody had posted with her on Facebook, I believe you can find if you on Reddit. And um, she was with, a, uh, I think, a very... I don't know what my, you know, my grandma would say an undesirable boy that looked very, um, I don't know. Like they're, they're, I don't they're, get the, it. Like the rumor, but she, you can't find her on social media. And to me, that's what even darked me out. Cause I found that out like before I, like before I did my rewatch for the, the Patreon thing I did. And it made all of those scenes have so much more weight. If you thought, Oh my God, the innocent girl that they were all fighting over and trying to like help and trying to make, if she wound up going the wrong path and maybe drugs or alcohol and then being homeless, heartbreaking. Like it adds so much weight to her storyline that you don't see. But if you have that piece of information going into it, you watch every scene and going like, Oh my God, this is the type of personality that maybe could be swayed into this or that and just find herself scarily on the streets and we even meet her mom and her brother in this that seem like very caring uh family members so i just would love if anybody listening i know your audience especially would know these things you know if anybody has any her information her name is dio dio hold let me find this really quick okay her full name is taylor dia giovanni yeah she went to stuyvesant which by the way I, do you know about stuyvesant or is that just a new york thing I don't know about Stuyvesant. It's no. a is, very, that a, is that a disease? What is that? It's a very prestigious public. She's the one who went to public school. It's public a school, very yeah. prestigious public school in the city. It's very hard to get into. And it's like very, very highly regarded. So she is smart. If she got into Stuyvesant, that's great. And I love that even the public schools are hard to get into. They are. I mean, no, Stuyvesant because it's it's a oh. it's like a math and science school. Wait, they I don't just, do elephant. They don't do elephant training. They there? don't do elephant training. There. I thought they so. I don't know. I just have a really hard time believing. I need more information. Somebody needs to find this check. Maybe I'll even like try, just try and see what I can find if I can find it. I mean, you're there. I mean, it's just just go through the streets. Yeah, go I know. Like, I'll, I'll I'll put on my mask, go into the subway. Yeah, like take around. the take a picture of her and just show <laughs> it to people like they do in movies. You know. Oh my god! I will say these these two girls, the Kelly and Taylor, they both reminded me different flavor, but like the same breed of like an Amanda Batula, like oh, yeah. high school Amanda Batula. Like yeah, not, I can see that. Not too far off, right? Like yeah, yeah, exactly. A mousy, yeah. sort of withdrawn, head 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 down, little meek, and then. Gets into the clutches of, you know, a Kyle Cook or a whoever. And you know, <laughs> the who knows? clutches of a Kyle who Cook. Knows? No, I love Kyle. <laughs> um, Kelly got on the show through a recommendation by Allie, Jill Zarin's daughter, Allie Shapiro. No way. Yes. That's I get so, well, you, you can see Allie Shapiro at two in two scenes and at two of the parties. Well, by the way, though, I will say I almost got. Camille. So Camille, I almost got, well, so my friend works with Camille down in Orange County and oh my God. she did, you know, she did not go to Harvard. She did not yeah. uh, like, so she says like in the first episode, you know, I'm, I'm one of the top 1%. I'm going to go to Harvard at 40. I'm going to be married. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. So she works at not like an MLM at all, she but works it's at Arbonne. Ar Arbonne. Yeah. Arbonne. And my friend, uh, who, you know, is a big supporter of the pod was like, oh, I'm going to reach out to her. And, and I didn't even know that she goes, I work with this girl. And she reached out to her and the girl and Camille was like, well, I don't really think so, but let me check it out and see. And obviously she checked it out was like, this guy's full of shit, you know, like, oh my God, so it just need to never happened. No, please, please reach out. Well, because, but think about it. Think about how, like, we don't really change that much from who we were when we were teenagers. We grow and we learn, sure. But that kind of cockiness that Camille had in that episode, that doesn't just leave you. You know, I mean, like sometimes that can get beaten. Life can beat that out of you, but it seems like she might still potentially be on that tip. So it's really hard to 
you know, come at somebody with an interview going that half of the interview would be about me appreciating the dark comedy of her life when she didn't view it probably as a dark comedy. So now no one loves their mom more than Ryan Bailey. And so I want to tell you guys about this great new jewelry company that I think would make a fantastic Mother's Day gift. There's this company called Ana Luisa and the founders of this company, they've spent many years work working for traditional luxury brands and they found that through the dubious manufacturing, retail markups, it just didn't seem right to them. So they wanted to start a new story in jewelry design from beginning to end, starting with recycled materials whenever possible. They're focused on creating sustainably crafted pieces that bring joy to those who wear them and also to those who make them with the conviction that luxury can be enjoyed without excess. I personally love rings and necklaces that are chic, timeless, ethnically crafted and long lasting. They're not going to fall apart. And that's exactly what I found with Ana Luisa jewelry. So here's the deal. They're having a Mother's Day sale starting today, Monday, April 12th. These pieces are fantastic gifts either for yourself, your mom, or just anybody in your life that you love. The sale is 15% off all products starting April 12th. Now the last day to guarantee standard shipping in the US would be Wednesday, May 5th. The other thing that I look for in jewelry is a fair price. At Ana Luisa, the jewelry is starting at $39 and they release new jewelry collections every Friday. So it's a constant new stream of inventory. So here's what to do to get the 15% off Mother's Day sale starting April 12th. Go to analuisa.com slash hot takes MD. Now the MD is for Mother's Day. I'm going to spell this out for you. A-N-A-L-U-I-S-A dot -A com slash H-O-T-T-A-K-E-S-M-D. Again, it's a n a l u i s a dot com slash h o t t a k e s m d. Use the code Hot Takes M D to get fifteen percent off. If you care about well crafted jewelry, sustainable products, go to analuisa dot com slash Hot Takes M D and definitely use the code Hot Takes M D to get fifteen percent off. I mean, what's better than a Mother's Day sale? She so I read an interview, I guess that had happened maybe a few years after the show and off the air. She was interviewed and it was really interesting. She was saying how she and Sebastian became really close, like really good friends. And they would go out all night, hang out, go to dinner, do whatever they did. The pr production wasn't there. And then the next day they had to come back together to film a scene like as loosely produced as this was like I see as this as being like fairly hands off as compared to what we're used to seeing now she said that they would drive the conversation back to like whatever plot point they needed to hammer home rather than just like letting them like talk about whatever they did the night before because the cameras they didn't capture it but they legitimately were like hanging out He's now okay. So Sebastian is now working in real estate. He seems like really he looks good. Like he cut that hair. He he looks. Good. He does uh post pictures of uh charcuterie trays that his wife made. Like I oh I did God. like that. That was like months ago, and I would like go back and look at all his photos. Well, we have to take this moment right now and give a shout out to Devora Rose. Yeah. She was the, in that photo shoot scene with PC and the models, she was the editor, or maybe still is, if this magazine's still around, of Social Life magazine. Now, this woman has been on every, re made an appearance on every reality show uh, known to man, including yeah. Real Housewives of New York. She was on New York as like Bethany's friend in the early and high days. And High Society on yeah, CW. She, yeah, she was Tinsley's friend. And I believe, I, was, was, was she on Millionaire Matchmaker? Or I'm like, I'm trying, I'm like oh, conflating wow. shows, but I mean, I just, at some time, was there like an email that went around Bravo of like people that you had to have in your shows or something? Cause she really did pop up in that time frame an unsettling amount of times. Like the fact that where I do see her on other shows and I'm like, oh shit, there's Devorah. And she's never like a main, main character, but I mean, a high society, she had a, a big, but it's just, it's fascinating that like one person can hit so many reality shows. Well, I think it says about that person that they're just sort of like a star fucker or like they're trying. They're like chasing something. Yeah. You know, somebody who like yeah, runs yeah. toward the camera is like probably not. that. Wait, well what is she doing now? <laughs> Got to look that up. I mean, that is like that. Now that Jess is somebody you could definitely talk to. Oh, God. 
no for real camille so yeah camille like well jesus christ she majored in neuroscience she wound up going to college of william and mary which is a great school it's not harvard but it is a great school she oh this is interesting so she was at nightingale that's the private school she was at and before the show premiered the school sent a letter to every parent warning them about the show and then i guess (laughs) she either i don't know if it was her choice to leave the show the school or if they made her leave because of the attention or whatever the school hated it that they oh, were i'm sure i'm sure yeah that's and so she what transferred they're... for her last <laughs> year of high school it's true <laughs> it's true overall do you agree or do you not agree that it it didn't seem overly produced I agree. I think every time they did try to over, they did try to overproduce. It backfired on the producers. I, would I mean, I don't, love, I don't think yeah. the, I don't think the producers planned on the the dog funeral. You know, <laughs> right? Oh my god! I mean, just the stuff that they didn't plan on was really. I mean, everything on the Cancun trip, everything that came out of that friend's mouth about, oh, when we're in boarding school. You know what I'd love to get? I would love, I was talking to the producer of Summer House a couple months ago and the, you know, he said, you do have a show Bible. You have a show Bible for each show that usually is what the show is about, what the characters are about, what you see as potential situations. Mm -hmm. I would love to get my hands on the show Bible for NYC prep of what they pitched, what the production packet was when they started, you know, because you also have to train your cameraman. This is what we're trying to get. Those are the inside stuff as I get further, further down this rabbit hole, like QAnon that I'm like looking to get my hands on. Wait, talk, like, more, I would love talk it. more about the show Bible. Like, so you, in, you interviewed Ian Gelfin, who's one of the, is he the EP of Summer House? Yeah, yeah, he's, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a phenomenal interview, but talk more about that. What else did he say about the show Bible and in terms of like what they're trying to get, like potential well, storylines that they're trying yeah, to Yeah, potential storylines, but even like think about the first season of Vanderpump Rules when they went back and they did like a behind the scenes of like uh, the first season. They did like an hour long episode and they showed like that photo where it was the pictures of the cast and there were arrows like Jax is friends with yes. this person and, and has hooked up with this person, this person, this person, this person's hooked up with this person, this person's hooked up. So it was a map of all of the previous hookups and relationships of the whole cast. Mm-hmm. So each show goes in with that of like, these are the relationships. These are the potential relationships that we have. These are the undetermines. This is what possibly could happen. This is what the, you know, this is what the theme of this show is about. This is what we're wanting to project from this show. This is like, you know, and that, that's even he was mentioning when you go into a new season, you know, what we're trying to do differently than we did last season, you know, what we're, you know, that's why they get rid of characters or bring new characters in because they're trying to get a different feel, a different vibe, bring something that was lacking from the previous season, supposedly. Um, and that's why I think sometimes the producers production like OC, et cetera, will get kind of lazy and you really don't see the work being put in on how we can really make this better, how we can make this an actual reality show and not kind of buy I wrote, uh, well, we put these elements together and, you know, these, you know, so, uh, so I, 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 that is, you know, and I think that really, I think he mentioned it really helping everybody involved, you know, and also with Bravo, because Bravo has to approve cuts of the show. They have to approve, they get approved when they want more episodes of a show. Right. Like they'll be shooting, you know, uh, I think he mentioned uh, a couple episodes and Bravo loved so much that they were seeing that they added on episodes. Right. You know? So those things are, and that doesn't mean staged at all. It just means thought out. Like think of us as audiences. Like you go into a season going, okay, I bet this could happen. We we do it ourselves. We write fan fiction for these shows as we watch them. So we take these characters and we like, oh, this could, wouldn't it be crazy if Lindsay slept with Luke in Summer House? Or right, wouldn't it be crazy right. if there was a second episode, a second season and Cole like ended up like weirdly like being the first guy that, uh, you know, or PC, like PC made out with Cole, like just randomly at a party. Cause they got so drunk. Like you, you, you start to think of these things of like what to possibly look out for. If alcohol is around, if, if other, like these substances around what you could possibly get, you know, and they do that. They got that from scripted scripted TV has show Bibles and all of that mm-hmm. stuff. You know, they have a writer's room. This is just a much more scaled back version of that. I believe. Do you know, guest of a guest, what the, do you we- mean? the website, no. It used to be kind of like a page six for 
New York socialites. It's basically like what gave Tinsley Mortimer a name. And that's where I think PC's names kind of came from because he is from this billionaire family family. Well, I love that his college plans were to get to LA, get to the West coast, you know, and, and the, the I school don't know he, if was, he went to the West coast. I don't know where he was he talking went. about Pepperdine, I believe, which is right off the PCH, which was like, bro, you are not going to love Pepperdine because it's like not even near that club scene that he would want to be involved in. That's in yeah. Hollywood, you know? So I'm really curious of what those after years were, you know, what they had for him. And obviously yeah. he landed on whatever feet we were saying he landed on because of, you know, the page six marriage and all that stuff. But he's obviously living a rich, uh, a rich person's version of a bohemian lifestyle. Yes. Okay. Between what's better? What would I, in your eyes, what's better? NYC prep or gallery girls? NYC prep. Okay. So, then but, this I, but, is... but I, but see, I don't know if I'm saying that. And this is so funny. I don't know if I'm saying that from a male perspective. I don't know if gal- gallery girls hits the, the female, mm. Uh, uh, the female psyche harder um, because I, I do hear, I hear the love of gallery girls so much NYC prep. That's why I'm so excited. We're talking about it. I feel like it does need to be brought, brought back to the forefront of a lot of people's, a lot of people's minds uh, for me, NYC prep. But I do know that there is a strong contingent of female fans for gallery girls. That I want to, I want to do gallery girls next. Cause again, I haven't seen it. I mean, it's so nice. So just like, you, you know why I love this show? I was immediately brought into the world like absorbed into the world which is not easy like I it's hard for me to like get into a new show and this one just immediately captured my attention I felt like I was there I mean it helps that it's like the city at least for me but it was so engrossing no it was I mean gallery girls I will say is shot a little more cinema verte where it's a little (laughs) like even the even the the way it's shot is just like a hair different than Bravo shows. I don't know. If, like when you see it, let me know if you think the same thing. I just remember going like, oh, this is not the typical way Bravo shoots a show. Um, so I was fascinated by that. Um, but yeah, I mean, NYC Prep to me, it is just a it's 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 a it's a show that it's it's is whole. Like even for the awkwardness of the 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 girls and stuff, it's still beautifully perfect in this imperfect way where it's like the universe is there. Like yeah. I would have loved to have seen a second season with all of these girls like being comfortable with filming all of these. I mean, just the the passage of seeing these girls like see junior and senior year. I mean, it would have been endlessly, endlessly entertaining. So I'm so bummed that they did not get that opportunity at all. I tried looking for the ratings because pr- princesses, the ratings are out there and the ratings are not that far the ratings were not bad at all for princesses it pretty much got the same ratings as like salt lake city or even potomac definitely salt lake city in fact princesses had higher ratings than salt lake city nyc prep i couldn't find the ratings at all backyard envy got two seasons and nyc prep was killed after one i appreciate them now going into the two season rule, but I, I just, no offense to uh, backyard envy nation, but I just, I don't, I, you know, I feel like that. That's, a, start, that's a fuck you to us. I mean, I think from the start, that's a, <laughs> not a great, you know, I don't think the universe was built for that show already, you know? Well, Ryan, we did it. So you, you now do your show four or five days a week, four or five days a week. It's daily. It's crazy. I mean, it's, it's like, How are you, you doing? know, are you, you happy? Were on it. Are you happy that you, yeah, we talked about Jersey. Yeah. I am, I, are you I, uh, happy you did it? I am happy in the sense that it exercises demons on a daily basis, but it, and I, and I love that I can talk about something that happens that day. Like I'll usually wait late at night to kind of put the wraparounds from the interview in it. Mm-hmm. I love that aspect of it. And I love that I used to do like, six hour pod like one six hour podcast a week i love that i don't have to piece all of it together like i used to because i mean just technical it was just a huge drain on my computer what is your favorite thing that you're watching on bravo right now like we got jersey uh, Atlanta, summer, summer, summer house summer house for some yeah. reason it is so light and breezy and at the same time there's a darkness to it 
just these little things that like really hit my pleasure button. Like, like when Dorit makes a, a Buca de Beppo room, is that like, you know, these things of like, you can make fun of forever of like a PowerPoint on why somebody should stay together. That's brilliant. Like it, it you know, cause it's bizarre yet. It, you know, what happens, you know, it's real. I mean, those things. And, and the fact that they, it's one location, the, the summer house is a character itself. Yep. I, it hits so many buttons for me and I look forward to it every week. I, it's one of those shows I'll even watch once for myself before I dig into it, take notes on it, you know? Quick more, I'm going to get your hot takes on a quick more subjects just on the yeah. fly here. Ramona Singer leaking her bank account. I mean, classic Ramona. That's what we love her for. And also $347,000 in the bank, girl. And you're making direct that's deposits just, from- Girl, that's just her checking account. That's checking. Do you know how many other accounts this woman has? Oh, I'm sure. And you're making, I want to know what that $14,000 check uh, that was going out was to. And also, That was my I, question too. I love the <laughs> fact that she's- uh, depositing her cameo checks individually. I love that that's going in. I know. There. Wouldn't that's you build up a income. balance like a Venmo and then cash it out like maybe once a month? You would think, but that's so Ramona too of like each one. And the <laughs> fact that like, I just love, it's like Kathy Hilton deals with this a lot where she doesn't really know how to use the forum. Like you really know Ramona is using her Instagram account when she just completely bun bungles it. <laughs> and I mean, I had gotten an, a residual check for how I met your mother that day for 89 cents. Yes. So like, or no, it was $2 yeah. and 89 cents. Yeah. And I was like, girl, I know what you go through. You know, <laughs> I'm going to have to deposit this now. You know, Beth, what about Bethany fucking falling on her face twice in the same day with that Meghan Markle, Harry. Beth, I mean, Bethany just doesn't know when to leave well enough alone. And it's, it's her, it's her Achilles heel. It always has been. She always has a way to remind you that she's an asshole. Like at at heart, she's an insecure asshole, and we all love her. And Is she she'll jealous like, of Meghan Markle. A thousand flipping, huh? and not Meghan personally. She she's thinks jealous it, of she anybody. It should have been her. Well, she's jealous of anybody that she thinks got success that didn't work as hard as her to get it because we did see her literally like just pathetically work herself to the bone in those earlier seasons, being the poor one, being the one at grocery stores, pushing skinny girl when nobody was listening to her. Like, you know, that's, you know, it's like when you, you get cheated on and you're so embarrassed and you, you take that with you for the rest of your life, her in those grocery stores alone, nobody wanted to talk to her. She remembers that for the rest of her life and she carries that around with her. So if she sees somebody that she deems not the world that she deems is not working hard enough to get the, the seat with Oprah, she's going to yell about it. And the fact is she's so now out of touch that she's just, I think she thought there was going to be a grant, like a wellspring of support for her in that comment, mm -hmm. you know, and I think she's uh, you're seeing Bethany age, you know, she's aging herself out of, I mean, her opinions are aging herself out of it happens. It's like eventually Bethany will be posting her bank statements accidentally oh too on Instagram. Okay. So, so follow up question to the Ramona, whose bank accounts would you like to see next? Whose would you rather see Bethany's or Andy Cohen's? If you could get a snapshot of the last five transaction, Bethany or Andy Cohen, my votes for Andy personally. Of course, my well, now we know for Ramona, uh, but I mean, Andy, of course. But I mean, I know Andy. I would just love to know how much he has. I don't care about his five transactions because I imagine he does a lot more transactions in a day just on stupid shit for his son and all that stuff. But not stupid, but just, you know, stuff that you have to buy for being a parent. I want to see Dorinda's. Oh, that's interesting. Interesting choice. Because she complains so she, she complained so much about money this past season. How much money went in the Bluestone Manor? She got let go from the show. I would love to know her cameo drops. I believe she's she's probably going to start hurting for money here in a bit. You know, she did the re, the the reno on her New York City apartment. Um, there is all of this stuff that I'm very curious about. And also, that was we saw Dorinda immediately hop on the Bethany train because Bethany actually is one of the only people that still talks to Dorinda in that circle. Um, I mean, I know Leah does too, but uh, yeah, I would love to know what Dorinda's working with financially. Fascinating answer. Okay, final thought, final question from a man currently wearing a sir hat. <laughs> well, I'm wearing a Decemberist hoodie too. That's like a, a band that's kind of respectable. We know who the Decemberists are. Okay, okay. Final question. Thoughts on Pump's potential closing due to these tax dispute yeah. allegations? It doesn't surprise me because, you know, the rumors you hear around town is, you know, that they don't pay their bills. I mean, Villa Rosa got shut down their their restaurant and there's still a unpaid grocery bill from there. 
um, that Ken was like, ah, I didn't, you know, if somebody needs money, we'll make sure they get it, you know? Well, but there have been the rumors that the fires they've had at Pump oh, and yeah, Sir they, are like an, oh, yeah. an inside job. We, I mean, I always joke about Lisa being an arson, you know, like Lisa, <laughs> like, and, uh, you know, we just, well, we just saw a pink fedora running away from the back alley of Sir, you know? Um, but the, the, the crazy thing about Pump, you guys, is that it's 80% open air. So they would be able to seat so many people with how even L.A. COVID laws are right now. So the fact that they're not they have more space there than Sir does, I imagine, in terms of outdoor area. So the fact that they're not paying whatever because the bill, you know, so like the state of California has not given them approval to open. And that usually means because of a tax bill, something like that, Uh, that has not been released what exactly it is. I'm hoping they they take care of it immediately. If not, I would really start worrying about what the hell is going on because they even just did a repaint job on pump. Uh, I think a month ago. Oh, they so, did. Yeah, like it went oh. back to bright pink again. You know, interessante. Ryan yeah. Bailey, this was fun. This is always fun. <laughs> always fun great. with you, Jess. Always. This is what I like. I mean, it's like this is. Uh, I mean, you know. I mean, I want to be. We're like the uh, the the Elaine May, Mike Nichols of <laughs> podcasting. You know. And we are proud to announce that the next show we're going to do, which we decided yes. in the middle of the conversation on my last appearance on your show the other week, we are going to do a rewatch of Britney and Kevin Chaotic, which oh I have God. seen many yes. times. You guys can watch this for free on YouTube right now. And you know what's so funny? This will be the, only the second time I've seen Chaotic. Oh I boy. only watched it once when it was initially on, and that was when I had a TiVo. Not even a DVR, a TiVo, and I would TiVo it every week, and I would go out to work, and I would watch it at like 3 in the morning when I came back from my bar job. Do you remember what network it was on? Uh, was it the WB at the time? It was on UPN. Dubba, 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 dubba. UPN. Oh, I knew it. Wow. Which is... Suspect, I just suspect. remember seeing like her like dancing on the the table in the hotel room with Kevin there, and I was like, "Oh, these guys have a these." It's like these guys seem like they probably have a lot of weed around them, you know? Like there was always like an array of snacks, and you know who plays a large role on Brittany and Kevin? Brittany, oh my god, you know who's a big figure on Brittany and Kevin? Chaotic from the Brittany doc. You mean you know Felicia? Yeah, yeah, she's uh, big figure in Brittany and Kevin. Well, but you know, I gotta say that I'm still shocked that that New York Times doc got Felicia. Like that to me was a huge get because she really was huge. everybody. If you are a fan of Brittany, everyone knows Felicia. Knows Felicia. I've she known was about a, Felicia every, for decades. Yeah. Like I mean, she really was everywhere. I would have. I had a thousand more questions for Felicia after that. I would. I mean, just exact. I want to. I have such deep questions for Felicia. But the other thing, like that, I think about chaotic is fascinating. If you watch it through the lens of this, is like a a Disney version of being Bobby Brown. Yes. Oh gosh. Well, way to yeah. So, way anyways, to, way you to guys, bring the, way to bring the mood down. No, but I think that's what makes it fascinating. <laughs> where can everyone listen to the podcast? Tell them everything. Where to follow you on Instagram? The podcast. Uh, so bad it's good with Ryan Bailey on Instagram. I have been shadow banned. I heard. So you you will <laughs> it'll be it'll be a hard it'll be hard to find me. So you have to literally search so bad it's good with you have to type in almost the full name. What does if shadow you, tell tell everybody? So shadow band is like a rumored thing where Instagram is never admitted to doing, but what they can do, which is just really sad and scary is that I never used to look at the insights tab as a business account would. And it'll tell you, you know, male, female, what age range, all of these really tools to kind of grow a business. Um, and there's an insights tab and it'll tell you if you hit on each post, how many people your post has gotten in front of not even your likes, but how many people have seen it, but also more importantly, how many new users have seen it that don't even follow you yet. And so bef uh, at the end of December, beginning of January, I was uh, averaging an 86% rate in terms of new users being wow. uh, exposed to my posts, which is amazing. Like you can't, and uh, you, you know, all the way back from the beginning of the account ever since then, I just, and I found this out last week and it just shocked me every post. Um, look at 3%, 1% getting in front of new users eyes. Like, so the people that follow me, which I have like, really, I'm so lucky to have an audience, but like now it slows down anybody new following you. It, it's like, it cuts it off like a pipe where you're like, 
oh my God, I was just one. I just thought, and this still could be true that I was like, man, you just got really unfunny these last two months. Like these last two months of just, cause why everybody, would, why would Instagram? So do there's this? a couple of rumors that they say you might've used an, a banned hashtag. I've studied this. I don't know what hashtags are banned, but I guess things like sex, things like this, those are banned hashtags. You might trigger something there. You might have gotten a lot of complaints um, that might've triggered that shadow band. Um, I don't know exactly. The sad thing is they don't tell you and shadow ban though. They really won't admit to doing it. They'll admit to some things like, um, like the search feature I used to, if I was on, if somebody else's account, if you typed in it, S O one word, it would pop it pops up, up, yeah, pop up now, even if I want to tag myself in a story, I have to type in my full name and like they, Holy they put shit. and there's, unfortunately there's a podcast called so bad. It's good podcast that has 57 followers that doesn't even make podcast episodes anymore they're the first ones that pop up so i've had so many people confused because if you go there they have a couple posts they're like oh this could be ryan because it's like somebody like making fun of like mambo number five and i was like (laughs) i would probably make fun of mambo number five so it is one of those frustrating things it's like as a business tool and as something that i really put a lot of work in and i know this sounds like such a bitchy whiny moany thing to say it bothers me because i don't know what i did so I'm taking the next couple of days off Instagram uh, to see, cause they say sometimes that might trigger things to like do a reset. I've also emailed Instagram. Nobody ever writes you back. So I don't know if any, if anybody listening knows anything about shadow banning, please uh, DM, DM me or, Ryan, yeah. or, or email me. It's so bad. It's good with Ryan Bailey at gmail.com and the show. Yeah. It's the show of the same name. Just subscribe. It'll show up in your feed daily. Thanks to anybody listening though. Really. Thanks for even listening to this. And like, isn't Jess kicking in the, you'll cut this out. Jess is knocking it out of the park though. <laughs> like knocking it out of the park. Like this is any, anyways, thank you, Jess. They, thank you. I love you guys. Follow me on. Oh my God. Uh, Jess XNYC. Hold on. Hold on. Guys, you can follow me, Jess XNYC. Follow the show account, Hot Takes Deep Dives. And Ryan and I will be back with you really soon for Brittany and Kevin Chaotic coming this spring. Yep. Yeah. <laughs>